see in, in your record that you were arrested when you were 16 years old. What was that arrest for? I wasn't arrested at 16. I was arrested at 14. 14? What was that arrest for? Incest. Incest. And how did that um, charge pan out? Did you, did you got sentenced? Yes, sir. I got served juvenile life. And so you stayed in jail until you were... Um, 19. 19. All right. And like Ms. Stapleton said, when you committed the incident offense, you were already on probation for a prior sex offense involving a juvenile girl. If we grant you parole now, what would be different? And it only gets worse. We are about to watch a parole hearing of a real cockroach who now has been locked up for his third offense. When will they learn? Let's jump into the parole hearing and I'll unpack it at the end. At this time, we'll proceed with the interview. How are you doing this morning? I'm good, how are you? How long have you been incarcerated? I've been incarcerated for four, four years now, sir. Four years? Did you, uh, how far did you go in school? I got my GED when I was a juvenile. When you were a juvenile? Uh, did you know the victims? Yes, sir, I did. You did? Did you know they were juveniles? Yes, sir. I see. I see. Have you attended any classes since you've been there? I took classes at the last facility. Last facility? How many have you taken so far? How much training have you had? I have my sex offender treatment. I have thinking um uh, I have anger management. And also to empathy and sympathy there at the facility. And right now I am currently enrolled in Thinking for Shame. Okay. How do you think you're doing? Or are, are you learning much or are you understanding? Are you making a change? You feel yes, sir. You do? Yes, sir. What do you normally do with your free time now? I am thinking of Things I can do when I go home to better my life and be there for my kids instead of being in jail and not having anything better to do with my life. You have kids? Yes, sir. How many? I have two. Two? What are they? Boy and girl? Boy and a girl. Boy and a girl? Oh, that's good. How old are they? One is nine, and then the other one is four. Four. I see. Very good. That uh, concludes my interview. And at this time, uh, my colleagues are going to, Ms. Stapleton has some questions for you to answer. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, I want to ask you a question. Uh, you're, you've got two separate offenses, two separate uh, juveniles. So what was the age difference with your first juvenile between you and she? All right. Um, I was 19 at the time and she was 16 at the time. And we, uh, I just come home from, from a juvenile office, uh, juvenile and I was talking to her sister and then me and her just, just hit it off and. Yeah. Something. So you talking about the case in 2013? Oh, yes, ma'am. And you're saying that she was 16 because my record showed that she was a 13 year old female. Sure. No? No, ma'am. No? 16? So 16 and 19? Yes, ma'am. How did y'all get caught? I mean, she, you were, there was babysitting involved, right? Carnal knowledge? Yes, ma'am. That was the charge. How'd you get caught? What happened? Um, I was going to church with her and her best friend was the one that made a comment in front of her dad. Mm -hmm. And her dad's the one that pressed charges. Okay. What about the second case? What was the age difference there? I was and you were on probation during that time. Yes, ma'am. I was on probation at this time. And um uh, it I was I was 26. 
26, 27 years old, and she was 14. Yes. What all happened? Uh, we started talking, and things went from one thing to another. What about, did y'all watch any videos of pornography, things like that, or in front of her? None of that is intercourse? Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. So you're kind of saying she fell in love with you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how did anybody find out about that one? Um, Because I opened my home up to her, and then... Everybody started assuming that me and her had something going on. And and then they what just went to the went to the police about it or told their parents or what? They went to the police about it. And when you say you opened your home up to her, is it that you invited her over and y'all watched movies together or something? No, and they no. just like that would uh cool. she uh I had nobody else to watch my grandma. My grandma just my my grandma just come out of the hospital, and my okay. grandma my grandma was living with me at the time, and I was working a twelve hour shift, and um, I didn't feel comfortable with my grandma being there alone, so mm -hmm. I was asking my family to come over to watch her, and they wouldn't do it, and she was the only one that that would actually. They actually told me that she wanted to come over to watch my grandma while I was at work. So you had children, you've got children now. Did you have children at that time at the house? And were you married, divorced, what? Or you were um, single and no children I've, yet? I've always been single, never been married. Okay. And so no children at your house when all this was going on, other no, than 14 year old victim. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so anyway. You've got opposition with the sheriff and um, the DA and the judge's blanket opposition. So that is my questions. Uh, at this time, we'll have questions from Ms. Brooks. See in, in your record that you were arrested when you were 16 years old. What was that arrest for? I wasn't arrested at 16. I was arrested at 14. 14? What was that arrest for? Incest. Incest. And how did that um, charge pan out? Did you, did you got sentenced? Yes, sir. I got served juvenile life. And so you stayed in jail until you were uh, 19. 19. All right. And like Ms. Stapleton said, when you committed the incident offense, you were already on probation for a prior sex offense involving a juvenile girl. If we grant you parole now, what would be different? And why? Tell us, you know, why why you think things would be different now? It seems like, you know, you have a pretty bad record involving that kind of yes, sir. Um, I I know I have a bad record for it. And um this time is different because now I can see that I have to change my life and I can't mess around with juveniles no more. And I have to better myself for the community and be a better productive citizen than I have been and leave drugs alone and um, leave the alcohol alone and then keep my head in church and then focus on God. Have you ever had any mental health evaluations or treatment? No, sir. Might be advised. Uh, that's the only question that I have. Okay. Are there any comments from the uh, staff? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. McNeese has been here since uh, 2023. Since he's been here, there's no disciplinary issues that we had with him. Um, according to my DOC program instructor, he has completed a sex offender treatment, and he will be graduating from the uh, Thank You for a Change in June. Um, other than that, I really don't know. I'm never, like I said, I'm over transportation, but I have not heard anything bad from the officers that I have talked to about him today. So that's pretty much all I have. 
Thank you so much. At this time, I guess uh, we're ready for vote. I'm sorry, I, I apologize. Uh, Mr. McNeese, would you like to have a closing statement? I apologize. Uh, my plan for, if I'm granted parole today, my plan is to show y'all and show everybody that I'm trying to better myself is by working a night, nighttime and a daytime job. The daytime job will be at the landfill and then a the nighttime job will be at Sonic. So, yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Are we ready to vote? Uh, at this time, Mr. McNeese, uh, I vote to deny. Yes, Ms. sir. Uh, I concur based upon your past history. And uh, you're fixing to get out on full time, right? Yes, sir. Me as mom. Yeah, so you're fixing to get out full time. So I hope everything you said is the truth or there's no more future victims. So today my vote is to deny. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Barnes. I am also going to vote to deny based on some of the same reasons they had, but I would recommend while you're still in there, you try to get into some mental health or more victim crimes to know how they feel and things like that to better prepare yourself for when you do get out on good time so that you really can be successful when you do get out. I mean, what you have is a serious problem and sometimes it just doesn't get better by, by itself. You're gonna, you are doing good. I see that uh, we couldn't find any disciplinary record on you, so that's good. You did take some classes. But a few more is definitely recommended. All right. Could you be more specific on the classes that I would need? Mental health evaluation. And we can talk to the warden about getting you to a facility. If they don't can't do it to a facility where they can. Yes, sir. Talk to the warden at your place. Yes, sir. Okay. At this time, you've been denied. And, uh, this concludes our business for today. Time is 10.06. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cockroach. Another cockroach. But who's worse? Is it the DA that keeps giving these little sentences? Now, I listened to this thing, I think, three times. They don't mention his full-term date or good time date or whatever. They just don't. Not a great, you know, the, the preacher... Uh, I'm not impressed with his interview style. Um, I think he might talk slower than Mr. O'Shea at times. Um, but yeah, there was, uh, anyways, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the preacher said nice when he responded something in the interview. And I was like, what? I had to listen to that. You know, what? let's, let's listen to it again and see if he actually said that. He did. Did you know they were juveniles? Yes, sir. I see. I see. I see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's without a doubt that he said nice. Anyways, I'm just pissed off. This is his third known offense. They don't count the first one because he was a child, was given life juvenile i didn't know that was a thing lifetime in juvenile can you imagine how scary what a, a a dangerous place that must be to be locked up in juvenile with these other monsters what hell must happen in that place for incest we don't have details on that then he gets this other charge, which he claims, so as soon as he gets out of juvie, he, he gets a charge, carnal knowledge of a juvenile, where he says, oh, I was 19 and she was 16. And Miss Stapleton says, are you sure she was 16 and she wasn't 13? He says, nope, 16. And, and it's just not true. 
Now, I mean, it's just not, I don't, again, have the date on it, but I do have the Louisiana legislation on it. And and uh, you don't get arrested in Louisiana when there's a three-year age difference, 19 uh, and 16. I mean, that's just not that I'm aware of unless the law has changed in the, those few years. But here it is. Let's read it together. A felony carnal knowledge of a juvenile is committed when a person who is 17 years of age or older has sexual intercourse with consent with the person who is 13 years of age or older, less than 17 years of age, when the victim is not a spouse of the offender, when the difference between, okay, when the difference between age of the victim and the age of the offender is four years or greater. I'm not very good at math, but the last I checked, 16 to 19 was more than four years. I don't know why Miss Stapleton didn't hold him to the fire about that. She's, uh, I mean, for I mean, you know, the, there's the, there have been hearings where she laid down the law and laid down the mic drops, but I've also seen more from her. Um, I've seen her on the bench, courtesy of of Kajun Overcomer, our, our Louisiana native, and I've seen the way that she goes to bat for victims. For, she calls them survivors, and um, I, I don't know. You know, I, 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 I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt because of what I've seen from her that you haven't probably that soon so you can all see it. I mean, in her wisdom and in her, she's, you know, a pillar of the, the definition of a victim's advocate. So either she knows something I don't or she's, you know, I'm going to give her out there but let's who we can't give the benefit of the doubt to is the district attorney or ada or whatever the, the judges of that blanket now they're apparently giving blanket even judges uh no statements but they hand out you know miss stapleton said to him you're fixing to get out soon anyways and i'm guessing the definition of soon is at least maybe a year so they give him at most a five-year sentence for his third offense he was 27 and she was 14 and he did it while on probation for doing it i believe a 13 year old first of all who gives probation then you only give five years after committing another act while on probation it's madness. He committed incest. He he's he has these are what he's caught for, has convictions for. And they're like, I commend you on not having any write-ups. It's like, no kidding. They, they don't have write-ups. It's in their DNA. You can give him the credit, though. He's real polite, you know? Man, and I, I appreciate the politeness and the, the, the Southern, uh, you know, I guess, nature when, uh, coming from the Connecticut hearings where these this things are just crazy. But but it also ma he, it makes him dangerous. He looks like the boy next door. You know, he looks like a good kid. He's so young. He's so dangerous. It's a disease. Just think about the potential casualties waiting and he has two children he's already been convicted of committing incest i don't know if he hopefully he's not going to be allowed around his children you can't make it up 
it's scary to think it just is. It's a ticking time bomb. With that, well, thank you, Richard, for pointing this hearing out. So I would have missed it otherwise. I've been busy um, focusing on on the other hearings: Illinois, Utah, Iowa. So I'm quite all over the place. So uh, thank you for pointing it out. And with that, I'll let you go.